lecture. So in this lecture, we're going to look at another technique that we have to know when we're doing path integrals for gauge fields. So we had already looked at uh, Dirac fields, how the Grassmann math helps. Now we're going to see how we're going to look at gauge fields. So gauge fields are nothing but these uh, electro Maxwell electromagnetic fields, wherein there is a gauge freedom of the uh, field A. Okay, so the vector field A. So what does this mean? You would have already seen that you would have studied about this gauge invariance. So the vector the electric field and the magnetic field the magnetic field is given by this formula the curl of a and the electric field is given by this formula right so but however a and b both these fields there is an arbitrariness to a and b which is that there is a function okay let's call this function so let's call this function lambda okay so there is an arbitrariness to this uh, a that is that you take a field that you take a field that is given by these potentials a and b and transform them by a function lambda by the gradient of lambda here and by the time derivative partial time derivative of lambda here that the field that it produces doesn't change okay that the field that a and b produces doesn't change however b and a might be different okay but the field produced the field that you obtain from that corresponding a and b does not change okay e and b does not change so this is called the gauge freedom or the gauge invariance of these fields okay so we're going to talk about how when we are writing this path integral formalism for these gauge fields we have to deal with this gauge freedom okay or this uh, gauge invariance gauge fields how do we handle them now here again this is the maxwell's uh, field strength tensor so we can write the entire maxwell equations in in terms of the tensor formulation using this maxwell fields tensor and in special relativity which combines b and a into a four vector uses the four vector potential and this has a gauge invariance given by this equation okay i'll explain what is meant by gauge invariance so this uh is there here we have the gauge invariance given by this relationship so there was a technique that was developed by uh, Hedev and Popov that we use to handle these gauge fields in path integral formalism so let us first look at this example so supposing we have an integration uh, that e raised to minus e raised to i some function of x and y s which is some function of x and y and the integral is over dx and dy now we can transform this integral into the polar coordinates right if you do that what will happen you will get it you'll get an integral like this and then you can factor out the integration over theta which will just produce a fact, factor 2 pi right so the integration will only be now over j so now that is what similarly that is what we are going to do in this case of handling gauge fields where we'll factor out the integration over this the redundancy of this gauge uh, invariance okay so integrate the the integral value that you'll get out of this redundancy of this gauge uh, freedom this invariance you will factor it out separately you'll write it as integral d of g so this g is your transformation okay so this a goes to a g and it produces the same field we saw what gauge invariance meant right so it can go that the the vector the so we saw that what gauge invariance meant so in the previous slide we had seen so a can so a can transform like this right so we are going from one one a to another a which is given by let's say this is another a now okay and I can repeatedly apply this gauge transformation. Okay. Pick another lambda and we can go to another uh, description of the potential, the A, which will produce, but will produce the same field. So this freedom that we that is there, or this redundancy that is there, we will factor it out in the integration as integral dg. And rest j will depend on 
just like here it will depend on some other quantities so that is the technique we are going to do okay so this is the method developed by Fedev and Popov. So we are going to evaluate we, in our path integrals, we are going to evaluate an integral like this, right? Now we will write one, the numeral one as this quantity. Okay, we will write the numeral one as this quantity. So when we insert one here, so if I insert the numeral one here, okay, so that means we are inserting this quantity here. So that is what is being written out here. And now we are just going to change the order of integration. So here you have this integral and then this integral is done. Now we are going to change, switch the order. So it's that this integral comes first and this integral goes to the next. Uh, the order of integration is interchange. Now as I said, we have this gauge freedom, right? So we, instead of going as from AG, So we go for, if you apply G to the transformation G, the gauge transform G to A, you go to AG. Now, if you apply G minus one, then you go to back to A again. So that is what we are doing. So replacing, you're doing this transformation such that it's AG goes off and we get A back here in this. Thing. Now, we factored out this, in this Fedev Popov method, we factor out the integration over this redundancy that is there in the that we get because of this gauge invariance that integration is factored out and is overall factors can be thrown away in our path integral formulation because as you had previously seen we were interested in the factors that were here right on uh, top of this the exponent uh, the exponent of e we were interested in those factors but this overall factors we we are we can throw away so uh, that so this method is again something that you will come across when you are talking about uh, free path integral formulation of uh, gauge fields. Okay, so we have studied about uh, the path integral formulation of uh, field theory, and we've seen what are the techniques, the Grassmann uh, math that is involved in writing the Dirac field in or the Spinner field in path integral formulation, and we've also seen. The technique, the Fedev Popov technique of writing the gauge field, the Maxwell gauge field in uh, in the field in the path integral formulation. So thank you for watching. So if you like our videos, do subscribe and also let your friends know that something like this is happening on and ask them to subscribe. So thank you for watching.